Hi everyone. I want to do a quick little video here on how to properly set a, a coil on a small engine. Now, I use the word properly very loosely um, because of there's a, a wide range of opinion on this, uh, including my own. So we're going to use my opinion and we're going to take it from there. So very first thing is we need to get our coil. Now, the orientation of said coils is important. If your coil, if you're replacing your coil and that's why you're doing this, oh, that's the wrong size, um, then you need to make sure that you're putting it on the correct way. The easiest way of doing that is to look at it when you're taking it off. Usually there's some type of marking for instance this one has a little notch the um it's just different on either side so you know you can easily tell putting it in wrong will result in a bad time you can have kickback it won't run very well it might not even start if it does start and run it's definitely not going to run well so make sure you do that so very first thing is that's finger tight i'm going to pull all the way back take a magnet or excuse me a screwdriver Find your magnet. That's my magnet right there. Now, this is the part that differs. Every coil is going to have a spec that you need to follow of the gap that you need to have. And when they mean the gap, they don't mean the gap from the flywheel, they mean the gap from the magnet. Because um, that can be different. The magnet can protrude a little bit, so keep that in mind. When you do this, you always do it off the magnet. Now the difficult part is, uh, for this one, for instance, it's 10 thousandths of an inch. Um, some people like to go a little bit loose and easy and say a business card. I'm gonna go loose and easy as well and say that this is uh, three pieces of paper I folded in half. According to um, my meter, this is uh, 10 thousandths of an inch. If I really squeeze on it, I can get it down to nine thousandths, but you know, that's pushing, that's really splitting hairs on that one. Um, technically, they make fewer gauges. Uh, they make all kinds of gauges for this. Some applications require a much larger gap, especially for instance, if you have a very fast spin of like a very high RPM. It can cause uh, rubbing because the flywheel will actually grow a little bit. So look up your spec in general for a small engine of sorts like this. Um, it's 10 thousandths. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do the loose and easy way because not everyone, especially when they're in their garage, is going to have a fewer gauge for 10 thousandths of an inch that they can use. But I'll go over how you're supposed to do that. Ideally, you'd have two or one long one, but you put it in between here. If you have two, you put one here and one here, and then you move the magnet, so the magnet is in between, and then you'll literally see this gets sucked in like that. When you see that, you tighten these with your fewer gauges. You move the flywheel out of position, remove the fewer gauge, and you're done. For the paper, it's pretty much the same process, except with paper. I like paper because it also makes it easier. You have paper at home, and the chances of you hurting something with paper is pretty minimal. So, um, tighten the coil down. It doesn't need to be super tight. This is a old DeWalt that needs some maintenance and it barely puts any effort in there, trust me. Next, that is good. I like to, if it plugs out, it's even easier, but kind of go over, make sure you don't hear anything, feel anything. If you hear scraping or clinking or clinking coming from the magnet and the coil, you might hear clinking just for the fact that you are spinning the engine probably around top dead center or pot uh, potentially at a point where the valves are moving back and forth. So you might hear that, but if, 
If you don't hear anything, you should be good. At that point, you're done. So, when do you do this? Uh, you do this whenever you take the flywheel off. You do this when you take the coil off. You do this when, um, if you have a points and condenser and you have to clean the points, you usually have to take the flywheel off. So you're gonna have to do this every time you do that as well. Um, so yeah, majority of time when I'm doing this, it's because I had to take off the flywheel uh, to do whatever maintenance I needed to do. So that's generally the pretty much the primary reason why I have to do this. But uh, for general purposes, if you're removing the, the flywheel or removing the coil at all, you're gonna have to regap it. Uh, don't just eye it over because it's just not a good idea. Improper coil gapping can be, you know, destructive. It can damage your coil, it could damage your um, magnets. And the reason why I also want to show you the screwdriver is a lot of flywheels, and potentially even this one, not this one because it's cast iron, but some of them will have a counterweight, especially the aluminum ones because the magnet's probably heavier than the aluminum around it. So they will have a way to keep it balanced. Um, that can look very similar to the actual magnet, but it's not. So you don't want to use that. So use something metallic like a screwdriver and make sure you're gapping it on the magnet and not the weight. Okay, so hopefully this helped out. If you like what you see, keep watching, subscribe. I'll be making a little bit more. So uh, keep an eye out and have a good night.